Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nayel Lucella, and my mentor for this project is Dr. Brigitte Roussel, and we are with the uh, Liberal Arts and Sciences College in the Modern and, Modern and Classical Languages and Literatures Department. I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to watch my presentation on creating an optimal learning environment and expanding access for foreign language learning to all students in the United States. As the United States is becoming more linguistically diverse um, in the population, as well as a rap living in a rapidly globalizing society, there is a need to be prepared with necessary language skills to participate and compete on a global level. And aside from speaking a foreign language, there are also cognitive and non-linguistic benefits that everybody can enjoy. Uh, for a few examples, confidence and positive attitudes, enhanced motivation and reduced anxiety are benefits that are seen in learners of foreign languages, as well as a proposed critical period for forming attitudes towards other cultures that are perceived as different, different has been proposed as the age of 10. Part of this research project was also to emphasize that there are different needs for every learner and that there are different approaches that need to be taken to be able to optimize the learning of all students. In the United States, we do not have federal requirements for foreign language education in terms of access, curriculum, or requirements in schools, unlike we do for things like math. Therefore, it is left up to the local states and school districts to determine how much and when students are able to get access to these programs. In some places, they're usually not offered until middle school or high school if they are offered at all. The purpose of this study is to identify the best ways to teach foreign languages, to look at the different plans between kindergarten through 16 and ways to teach them along those lines, the, to show the importance of expanding access for foreign language education, as well as to provide myself with foundational knowledge for a future research project. The questions that were used in this uh, review are, what is the optimal learning environment for foreign languages and how can this goal be realized? And how can foreign language education access be expanded in K-16 settings across the United States? A major component in being able to create programs for everybody is to understand that a one-size model does not fit all. Students have different levels of motivation and different levels of language aptitude, just like some students are really good at math and learn math in a certain way that best suits them, which means that we need to take into consideration the individual language learning styles of each and every student. By considering the diverse needs and learning styles of students, teachers can modify their instruction and curriculum development. Some um, special populations also need to be taken into consideration, which would be the special needs learners, and some examples of special needs learners include deaf or hearing impaired students, gifted students, and students with learning disabilities or disorders. To be able to best suit all students, including special needs students, accommodations need to be made for the material to be accessible to them. When looking at how to create an optimal foreign language environment, the first place is to start with teacher training and curriculum development. Uh, teachers need to be educated and knowledgeable about the foreign language they are teaching, as well as educating a diverse population and planning to teach them. Curriculum should also be planned to allow continued growth in students' language development as they progress from kindergarten up through college. For example, a lack of an articulation plan could look like a student having access to a foreign language education program in kindergarten and not having access to it later as they move up a grade or end up moving to another school district, which ends up with them having to restart at the same place they began later on in school instead of being able to continue and expand on the education they've already received. Um, considering students' levels, capabilities, and learning styles and instruction, and instruction and curriculum planning allows teachers to take a differentiated instructional approach which can better suit all students and the needs that everybody has. Uh, 
some mediation tools that can be used to help enhance the abilities of teachers to help teach a diverse population uh, could include using a multimodal approach which combines different forms of mediation tools. And a mediation tool is, the, um, is a medium for teaching such as a textbook or conversations or watching video activities. An um, example of a multimodal approach is to use video with a written activity or a video activity with a speaking activity and combining different modes of instruction. When we're, looking for, when we're looking towards how to expand access in the United States, the first step is to get support from the stakeholders and the public. The stakeholders refers to the government, teachers, and school administrators, and these are the people who help fund and create these successful programs. Another part of this, which also um, coincides with getting the public support, is to help dispel and address the myths and misperceptions about foreign language learning. Some examples of these are that it is impossible to learn a foreign language unless you've started very young, that foreign languages are not a useful skill to have, and that early language learning could damage a child's language and cognitive development. And none of these are true, as I have talked about a little in this project. And the lack of articulation plans that are in place for students from kindergarten up through college makes it difficult for parents to see that younger children can gain knowledge from this and grow their knowledge and to lead them to believe that foreign language learning really only begins in high school. If we're looking at a way that we can garner more support from the government, we could take a look at the Critical Language Scholarship, which is a scholarship funded by the U.S. Department of State to help send students to other countries to learn languages that are considered critical languages. They are languages that are critical to national security and economic prosperity, such as Arabic, Swahili, and Azerbaijan. An approach that has been proposed is the selective approach to help expand foreign language access and get more support and funding from stakeholders and the government by only offering critical languages to students that are perceived as the most useful for national security and economic development. Looking towards the future, the previous research that I have used in this study is out of date and updated research is needed as well as a focus on Kansas in the Midwest, as this is an underrepresented area in the literature. Um, and looking at the effects of current events on the beliefs and perceptions of the public and students, considering that we are all going through a global pandemic and are learning about other societies and having to work together as, uh, as an international community, it would be a great contribution to our understanding of the support for and against expanding these programs and allow us to understand the approaches needed to take for each indivi individual community. And this research project was done for me to have the foundational knowledge to conduct my own mixed method study on these topics for my 2021 to 2022 research project. At this point, I am open for questions. So the selective approach was proposed to help do this and to help get more support from the community as well as the stakeholders and funding from the government, which involves teaching critical languages to students and only offering those because as we can see with the critical language scholarship that is offered by the U.S. Department of State, the government does recognize the necessity and the value of learning these critical languages. And if we could get more of the support from the public, then we could also eventually let it lead up to stakeholders and government support. And that would be one of the best ways, possibly one of the best ways to get the most support for requiring a foreign language in education. Well, part of this is not to say that foreign languages matter more than a STEM education and increasing that, but that foreign languages are a crucial part of being able to prepare students for participation in the world, as well as being a, um, an understanding of different cultures and communities. So I would approach legislatures first off to show that foreign languages and even arts programs are important for a, a well-rounded student, and just focusing on STEM Will not, will not prepare them completely for the world. 
as well as show the examples of the many countries in Europe who teach more than um, two languages, or sometimes three, starting in primary school up to secondary school, as well as to bring up the critical language scholarship and reiterate to them that there is an, an is a substantial amount of funding put into all of these students and when they are sent on the critical language scholarship their travel is paid their education is paid there the government makes sure all that's taken care of so that would be a great example to show the government that they already have these programs in place and that it would be a good idea to also include them in K through 12 learning and to understand that not just STEM is the only thing that students need to be successful individuals and well-rounded.